You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with Colby Hink from the band Boreal Hymn. Colby, thanks for taking time to talk to me, man. Hey, thank you. No problem. So uh, what have you been listening to lately? What I've been listening to recently? Uh, a lot of stuff. I've been really into... Uh... You know what? Let me refresh my memory. I'm with my Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> I, I listen to music pretty sporadically. I listen to a lot of different things for, you know, a short period of time. I've been into a lot of a lot of death metal recently. I've been listening to Necro Christos, okay. uh, Temple of Void, that type of thing. Some Nile in there, too. Any of those? Uh, I know Nile isn't Canadian, but are any of the other ones? Or any other Canadian bands you wanted to mention? Canadian bands? Who's Canadian that I've been listening to? Uh... Listen to a lot of Panzerfaust. They're Canadian, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah, great band. Okay, yeah, I'll have to dig more into them. I know I've definitely checked them out before. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Colby, how do you remember falling in love with music? Um, I have a specific memory of, of hearing uh, Master of Puppets when I was a young kid. I don't really remember where it was, but I know I remember my first reaction to hearing Master of Puppets by Metallica. And I remember it hit me in a way that other music hadn't because I just I think it was the tone of everything, like the drums with the reverb and the the metal guitar tone. I'd never heard anything like that before. So that was my first kind of uh, exposure with heavier music that really sunk its teeth into me. Uh, I don't know how old I was, probably 10 ish. Um, before that, I listened to a lot of stuff that my dad was into, classic rock. And I, I, I liked music a lot, but I didn't really have my own identity with it, per se. Right. So Metallica kind of woke me up to music, I'd say. Early influences for you, obviously, Metallica. But once you started going down the rabbit hole with metal, what did you start to really... What were your early things that you clung on to? Um... I got into extreme metal pretty early on. I think I was a young teenager when I was getting into death metal and that kind of thing and black metal. Um, Entombed really stuck with me when I was a kid. Um, Bathory, which is now relevant, I guess, to the conversation, uh, right. was a huge band that I listened to. Uh, yeah, I listened to. I got into heavy metal through you know the classic thrash metal bands and stuff, and that kind of brought me into. Uh, the European stuff, which naturally led to the more extreme underground type of sound. Um, yeah, Bathory. Uh, as far as far as black metal goes, I'm thinking black, uh, Bathory was big. Uh, Dark Throne. Uh, Dark Throne still one of my favorite bands, of course. Um, yeah. And, and so uh, with Boreal Hymn, the ba uh, the band that you're in now, how did that all really kind of start? Um, I think, it, yeah, there was a solo project that I was working on for a while of a six of a six succession to uh, the project I was doing previously. And I didn't really know what form I wanted it to take. Um, so I worked on it for a while, just kind of, I, I, I knew I wanted to do something that had, I knew how I wanted it to, to feel. I know I wanted to express a certain feeling, but I didn't really know how to, how it was going to sound. So I worked on it for a bit just by myself and then eventually um i talked to bronson who's the other member of the band now about uh singing because i i felt like it needed a strong uh like a clean male voice so he seemed like the guy for the job he, he's in uh seer i was in a band called worm or i am in a band called worm which we uh played a bunch of shows together so we've known each other for a while so i played there. worm Witch on the show before you're oh, a great awesome. band great thank you of course uh, uh so, yeah. yeah so uh, no go ahead uh, I was just going to say, I knew Bronson for a while. Yeah, he was the, he was the guy that I wanted to do it with, and uh, we put a demo together. That's about it. So what was, like, the – did you guys have, like, a shared vision? Uh, yeah, we had some talks. We went out, uh, had some fires in the woods and had some discussions about – Oh, that's exactly where you need to be going, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We went up to the hills and uh, – Responsibly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But – uh. Yeah, we had some talks about it before we ever started really writing music. So I think we kind of came, yeah, we, we were on the same page when it came time to start working on a demo. 
That's that's funny that, that you mentioned that though. It makes me laugh. Was like that, as soon as I cl first clicked on Boreal Him, I felt like I was outside. Perfect. <laughs> you know, I, like it was a, an outdoor kind of a music to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the writing process between every everybody, what was that like? Um, it starts with me generally. Um... I mean, to be honest, we haven't written a whole ton of songs for this band yet. We got new stuff happening now, and we and we had the four songs in the demo. But uh, it right. generally starts with me. Um, I'll kind of write the skeleton for a song, and then uh, most of the instrumental in instrumental stuff is kind of my domain. But I'll send it to Bronson, and then as the vocals kind of come together, the song changes a lot. So it ends up being quite different, and it's a by the end, it's a pretty cumulative process. And, and as far as recording so far, what has that been like? Uh, it's been at my home studio or kind of kind of my home studio. We, we did some of it at uh, another studio. That's our, our band's practice space that we share. So just a uh, DIY recording so far. Well, it's, it turned out great. Uh, when I listen to the album, I can hear everything, which would have been a hard thing to accomplish considering how many instruments you guys managed to fit onto the album. Mm. How many is there? Do you have an official number? As far as instruments, I'm not sure, yeah. uh, but I know in the pro the recording project there was forty something tracks on that. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, on the guitar is kind of my thing that I do, but on on these recordings, I'm uh, doing all the electronic stuff as well. I'm doing the uh, the bass and the all the folk instruments. Well, a lot of the the instruments are kind of not instruments that i can play there's there's a oh. there's taggle harpa stuff on it and a taggle harpa is an instrument that i that i built for myself off of some youtube guides and it's it's not an instrument that i would say i really can play but i can i can perform the notes for boreal hymn you know what i mean so you hold on backtrack a little bit for me so there's an instrument called uh what a taggle harpa and you built it yourself Mm -hmm. it's an it's uh there's a few names for it there's uh it's been called a tall harpa or a yohiko or a uh i've heard it called a viking violin but it's <laughs> uh it's an instrument it's a i think it's an ancient finnish instrument but it's it's prevalent in old scandinavian music and it's like a three-stringed bowed lyre um and i you can buy them but i i built one out of out of two by fours and uh, guitar strings and that's what's on the record screw trying to buy the sound off of the shelf right yeah i mean it's utility more than anything else i kind of just want to be able to make the music that i want to make here and now i don't want to wait i don't want to i mean i just don't feel like i need to have the the right equipment to make the stuff that i want to make i kind of just want to i just kind of want to get the sound and i can get that through diy means and i just enjoy it and I think that's one of the why the you guys don't sound like any other band. You sound like yourselves. Mm. Well, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> and is it just the two of you? Uh, yeah, we're we're uh, bringing on a friend who's a drummer uh, for the next record. But uh, currently, it's just the two of us. Oh, okay. Okay. So for future ongoing stuff that you guys are working on, do you have a couple of songs in the bag that you're still kind of brewing? Uh, we've got four or five songs in the bag that we're brewing, and that'll probably be the next release. It'll probably be uh, another mini album. Oh, exciting, exciting. You have any any hint to as what the timeline on that might be? I'm not even sure, but probably... It's hard to say right now, I'm sure. Uh, probably f late fall, fall-ish, I want to say. Wow. Okay, I I'm, I'm don't, don't want to get my hopes up too high, but I, <laughs> I, I, I'm really, really, uh, really looking forward to future stuff from you guys. Sweet. Thank you. Uh, an early so, influence for you was Bathory. Yeah. So I just, what was Bathory? That's a interesting I know. question. That's a I big know. question. Um, okay. Well, a big thing with Bathory for me when I was younger was that um, it was a very do-it-yourself or as far as I, I knew or know, it was a do-it-yourself kind of studio band, which I thought was really inspiring. Because uh, that was one of the band, like, I grew up in Abbotsford. Do you know where Abbotsford is? Yes. Um, 
at the, it's kind of bigger now, but at the time it was smaller and there wasn't, I just didn't really have people to be in a band with. So the thought of having a studio project that I could do just myself was really attractive. And, uh, Bathory was a big inspiration for that. I know there was other members, uh, and that kind of thing, but the way that the music was put together, uh, I think definitely influenced the, the kind of attitude I take towards making music in general. So, uh, yeah, the music itself was really inspirational because it was kind of my first exposure to folk uh, metal and, and Norse pagan influenced metal and music in general. Um, but definitely the, the way that it was a, a studio project was something that I hadn't really experienced, especially with a metal band, you know? Um, so I wouldn't say, I, I definitely wouldn't say anybody was, would, is wrong calling Boreal him a black metal band because black metal is for sure a, a big major influence but i don't i probably wouldn't call it a black metal band yeah just it's, because it's, it's we have uh the attitude that we take towards it that i know that we take towards it i don't think is exactly a black metal attitude I, i'm and for me and i'm sure as for you you don't really care about having a label on it you would like to just call it boreal hymn and be over with it but yeah if 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 someone's going to come along and put a label on it is there any any that you've come across that you thought might feel comfortable? That's something that I struggle with. I don't know what to, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've wanted to answer that question since we started the band. I don't really have an answer for it yet. Well, I so don't I, think you should, you know, I think you should guys just be Boreal him and not yeah. worry about what people, because let, let other people try to figure that out. It would be nice though, if we could, it would be nice if we had an easy, uh, a phrase that I could tell people what the band sounds like. But it's always a big, uh, it's always a big ordeal when it's, I have to, I want to explain the band verbally to a person. I don't really know what to say. Well, maybe uh, that's because you guys will be the the beginners of a new genre. Maybe that would be <laughs> that would be I'm wonderful. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. <laughs> why Man of Iron and why now? Um, why Man of Iron? It's just a really cool song that we felt like it we could do in our own way i when you picking a song to cover is always difficult i don't know if you're a musician yes are you uh have you ever done a cover with a band and had a really hard time deciding what song to do yeah very much so there's so many factors especially yeah. vocals and everything like that mm -hmm. it's got to be the right thing and it's got to fit the singer and it's got to it's got to be something that you feel like you can do differently enough but it's also got to be a classic enough song so we mulled that over for a while and and this is the Bathory song that we wanted to do after all those things considered. Our, uh, my friend uh, Robin, who sings in Wormwitch, suggest, suggested this song. Um, what was the second part? The second part was Why Now? Why Now, yeah. Um, well, to be honest, you might want a slightly more profound answer. But uh, honestly, we just wanted something to do during the quarantine. Um, we had a ton of time on our hands and we were writing new stuff for for the maybe fall release but that's a ways off we wanted something that we could put out right now just to i guess stretch our legs and uh make some music and do something and uh yeah what we want to do yeah no it doesn't have to be anything more than that right oh and uh, you know so uh because of that that's why we wanted to donate the proceeds just because we're not trying to make a buck off of a song we didn't write. And we felt like uh, that money would be better going towards a cause than just a, uh, a small release, you know? That's right. Absolutely. We didn't do any PR for it or anything. We just kind of threw it on, on Bandcamp for the people that might find it there. Uh, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with Colby Hink from the band Boreal Hymn. They have a new cover up of the Bathory song, Man of Iron, on Bandcamp right now, and all proceeds are going towards the Canadian Mental Health Association. Uh, I think that's a really important cause, uh, uh, personally, and I know it is, just it just is. Uh, is what, do you think that there's still a lot of stigma surrounding mental health nowadays? Stigma? Yeah. Um, I've definitely... I've had my own struggles with mental health and I definitely know the feeling of 
feeling kind of uh like yeah well stigmatized about it and not wanting to be too open about it and that kind of thing so it's definitely something that's good to have out in the open discuss i think it's also a powerful gesture coming from a band such as yourselves uh kind of being in this uh well going back to the black metal label thing again but you're a metal band at the end of the day right and uh standing up for that in that way because i think there's just a lot of stigma just in the culture of metal it was just kind of uh you know very masculine and everything like that and just trying to break out of that mold nowadays is awesome to see from a band such as yourselves trying to do that so i commend you for that Mm -hmm. well it's a problem that's out there that it, it, it's a problem that so many people face that it's strange that there is a stigma about it, you know, especially in today's day and age. So yeah, we're happy to, uh, it, it's, it seems like a cause that is extremely relevant right now, especially with the, the, the quarantine, with the isolation um, that can, that's not doing anybody any favors. Things are, are stressful right now. Absolutely. And uh, just remembering to, take care of ourselves and our own self-care and everything like that is something that nobody's really trumpeting uh, Mm -hmm. as much as maybe they should be. So it's, it's great to see it coming from people such as yourselves. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Best place, place people to go online to find everything you guys are up to. Um, Facebook or Instagram, probably are the music's all on Bandcamp, but if you want to see updates uh, and that kind of thing, Instagram and Facebook is what we're doing. All right, that's the place to go. Uh, and I like to ask this question close to the end. It's just any advice that you would give to an aspiring artist or just people in general? Um, hmm. uh, don't be afraid to start from scratch. That's my advice. Yes. Yeah, in general. Great, yeah. Because a lot of people are start scared to just start over, right? Yeah. And as soon as you get started, get that ball rolling, it's not so scary anymore. And also you have momentum. That's something that I found important with music, but also with, with life. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Is there anything else you'd like our listeners to know? Uh, no, not particularly. Check out the cover, check out, uh, the demo that we put out a few months ago and we got some more stuff coming in the future. So, uh, keep an eye out. Definitely. Uh, and, uh, let me know when that stuff comes up so I can get you back on the show again. All right. For sure. I'd love to. Yeah. And hopefully when all this mess is over, Boreal him can come out to Penticton and do a show. For sure. Yeah. We're going to get on the road as soon as we can. Awesome. Everyone you've been listening to the peach pit. I've been talking to Colby Hink from the band Boreal him. Thanks for taking time to talk to me, man. Thank you. Awesome. Take care of yourself. eh? you too.